Oh yes, people, it's another time for another TP session where we're going to be plotting these particular curves right here. Trigonometric curves, so um, it's going to be fun stuff. You're going to learn about the iterator node and all that kind of good stuff. So let's go ahead and start plotting this stuff. Let's see how we're going to implement this in uh, 3ds Max and TP. Let's do this. Okay, so we're going to begin this whole thing by actually dropping our TP system. So under particle systems, dropping our thinking particles. And I'm going to pull up my UI. And for one, we're going to be creating only one dynamic set. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off edit on the fly so that way we get the results uh, immediately. We don't have to do a whole lot. And for our first node is going to be under the operator operators. And we're going to get an iterator node from the initiator folder. And now this in TP is more like a for loop uh, in programming. That's how you might want to think of it, I believe. And pretty much what you're going to be doing with this is actually birthing particles with this. Eventually, that's what it's going to be doing. And you're also going to be running the particle positions for every single point. Now, in our case, for the count, I only have one. So I'm going to go ahead and increase that to like 100. So literally, what I'm saying is this is going to birth 100 points off the top. All right, so it has a few outputs over here, but the one we we're looking for is the number normalized because uh, we cannot be dealing with. Uh, I really cannot explain how it works, but that's the port we're gonna be using. And for one, I'm gonna need something to amplify the effect, so I'm gonna get a float, which I'm gonna plug in over here, and it's gonna be under multiply, and I'm gonna just put a random value of let's say 50 or 100, whichever one you feel like. Is good. We're gonna have to change it later on anyway, for sure. We're gonna have to change it up later. And now you're pretty much done with setting up the position data. Now you happy? Anyway, just joking. Now we're gonna drop in uh, what you call it. Uh, under the math, we're gonna drop in a sign or cosine, whichever one you feel is good. And these are really easy to set up, really. So it really won't be hard, such a headache to set them up. Actually, if I shift drag this, I can make this the sign. So if I rename it over here to sign and uh, rename the function value to sign over here and I also rename the output to sign pretty much you've done the same thing like going up to the math uh, math uh, black box and getting the uh, expression value from over there so now what we're going to try implement is a frequency right before you plug the die we can plug it in over here but we won't have no control over the frequency so in order to get our frequ frequency data in, we're going to get a helper, which is the add multiply. And we're going to plug that into this right here. And I'm going to shift drag to make a copy of it and plug that in right here. Now, for this float over here, I'm going to just shift drag it over here. And we're going to make this a frequency in X. So I'm going to go ahead and rename that to frequency in X. Frequency in X. And I'm going to just shift drag this to the bottom and re rename this to frequency in X. Y, all right, plug in the values accordingly and value to value B. And now, pretty much, these ones should be. I'm gonna just reset them to zero by right clicking on the uh, spinners over there since we're gonna be manipulating the data later on. So, I'm gonna shift click on this to uh, disconnect it, plug in, plug that into the cosine, and plug this value over here to the uh, sign. Now, for this one, you want to make sure they're actually under the multiply. Uh, font sign over here, so multiply. So make sure it's a multiplication sign on both of these. And now, pretty much, you done set up the what you call it the frequency part of the trigonometric curves. Now, we need to set up the amplitude right after that. So, I'm gonna shift drag this and I'm gonna go ahead and reset the value to zero. And now, we need another add multiply. I'm gonna just shift drag that over here and I'm gonna just plug this in over here and plug that in over here shift drag one more time plug it in over here and this right here and all of them under the multiply sign all right I'm gonna rename this to amplitude amplitude and now it pretty much done set up the position data when you think about it now we need a point three to actually help implement the point three so this is pretty much going to be our x as we kind of said over here x so x value and y value so pretty much it's going to be lying flat on the z plane because z is actually zero so it's going to be lying flat on the z plane now if you actually want to manipulate some coils and stuff you're gonna actually implement the same thing only now for z but i'm gonna just be doing the curves for now since that's where i got to right now 
Now, lastly, we're gonna get out under operators standard uh, operators generator. We're gonna get a position born. So pretty much all the particles are gonna be born from this particular position that we just set up right here. So vector plugs into the position obviously because it won't plug into anything in one of these because uh, those are just float values. Now on the particles that, got, that are going to be born over here as i said earlier the iterator node is actually what's going to be controlling all of this stuff so as of right now i got a hundred particles being born literally so for the pistol shot you want to make for the particle position born you want to make it a pistol shot and you want to make it one obviously i mean definitely you want to make it a one and you want to make it park call so that way tp literally has everything from the get-go from this guy and it's one of those internal things from TPU where you just click, click till it comes to you like, wow, that's how it works. Now, pretty much you got all this data set up. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hide my TP interface. And uh, as you can see, I got my particles being born. And even though they're being born, um, you know, kind of like going up and stuff, I didn't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on the speed well both really doesn't matter and all that stuff so i'm gonna go ahead right click on those to reset them and now all the particles actually run in the middle now i said earlier we have an amplitude which pretty much controls the um what you call it I'm gonna pull this to the side over here and the amplitude controls the radius or the height or whatever you want to call it so coming over here and um let me make sure i got uh edit on the fly off okay good I got my amplitude over here, so I'm actually increase this, and as you can see, that moves my particles a little bit to the outside over there. So that's all my particles pretty much being moved to the outside. Now I got a frequency which is actually zero, so I'm gonna go ahead and increase that, and now you see my particles are getting. Um, I don't know whether it, I think I believe it should be quite visible, but the particles are actually going back and forth each other and that's in the X now if I go to the Y and look at the Y they're gonna do the same thing only now in the Y as you can see they go back through the Y uh, both sides so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is actually look at our thing that we got over here if I have a value of 1 and 1 I should have a circle and if I have a value of 2 and 1 I should have this number 8 thing and if I have this, I should have like all this kind of good stuff. So trying to implement that in TP, well, we're just going to plot it in the numbers. So this is the frequency. If I put a 1, let's see whether it works. 1 and a 1. Well, I get a, not a really a complete circle, but we got a thing I said over here. We, we have value, which I really can't give a name for it because I really don't know what the name would be. But if I actually increase this to... A higher number you can see up to right there pretty much a 360 actually that's a perfect 360 right there gives me a perfect circle so pretty much i guess you can call this the pi in this particular stuff i don't know but i really don't know but you see it gives you a perfect circle now if i actually put a two on this one it gives me well let's see let's see a two, I, I put a two on the X in our case, it gave me this little uh, curve right here, as you can see. Two. So if I put a two and a two, it should give me this circle. If I put a, uh, if that's two, if I put a three on the X, it should give me this number. Uh, I don't know what you call this thing, but that's what it should give me. So if I come over here and put a three, it's going to give me the little uh, X thing. All right, and there you go. So pretty much the tutorial is pretty much done when you think about it. Because all you gotta do now is actually play with the numbers, and you'll have all the uh, particles being born. And for one, the iterator, as I said earlier, this actually births the number of particles in between. So if you wanna increase the numbers, you see you have more particles now, and now you can play with the frequencies and stuff, and you have all this kind of neat stuff. So pretty much. I'm done now. All you gotta do is actually play with the numbers. Now you got your amplitude, you can actually increase the size for this, and you got your flow to increase the number of uh, stuff. Actually, I think that should be 360, huh? I think so. And now you can actually just.
play with this stuff and have fun. Come on, it's TP, man. You know how we love doing this kind of stuff. Now, I'm out. I'm going to make you the next one, which is definitely going to be just as awesome. Well, not really, but I'll try. Anyway, see you on the next one. TP, definitely, for sure. Out.